It was a nice sunny day in a small town in Maine. And then evil came. Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and today we celebrate the one and only Stephen King. And not only because it's nearly Halloween, but also because his birthday is on September 21st. So a while ago I reviewed one of his novels, The Stand, and it gave me the idea to do an entire video dedicated to Stephen King. Mostly because despite him being very famous and having a very distinctive style, I feel like he's also very misunderstood. In my experience, most time when people hear the name Stephen King, they immediately think about horror novels. Now, they're not wrong, he is after all the king of horror, but he's a lot more than that. One of my favorite things about his book is that no matter the supernatural element in the book, whether it's a demon, an alien, a mutant with superpowers, the real evil are flesh and blood humans. For every Pennywise and Carrie, there is a bully who's the characters you really want to hate. So what is this video all about? Well, it's an introduction to the works of Stephen King. I will start with a disclaimer. I did not read everything King wrote. This guy wrote like 60 plus novels. It will probably be around 70 by the time I upload this video. And he also wrote a bunch of short stories that I didn't read because I don't like short stories. But if you've always heard the name and wanted to know whether you should even bother reading anything by him, or you've seen his huge bibliography and doesn't know where to start, or you are interested in horror but afraid of anything, let's say, too gory or something, this is the video for you. I will give you a bit of an overview and share some of my favorite works by him under different subgenres, so you can decide in which direction you want to go. So first, a little bit in general about King's books. As mentioned before, King's main thing is horror, and his vast imagination is what drew me and others to his books in the first place. He doesn't only create monsters, but an entire world around them. But these monsters don't live in a vacuum. His novels take place in the real world around regular, real people. In many of these works, his story takes place in a small town where everybody knows everyone. It's a picture-perfect suburban setting, except it's not. And not necessarily because of that evil, but because of the humans. Again, for every creature King creates, the real antagonists are human. And many times this evil entity just brings out the worst of them. This will be a good time to mention another thing I absolutely love in King's novel, and in my opinion, is his strongest attribute, even more than his lore and imagination, and this is his characters. He creates such amazing characters, good and bad, young and old, male and female. They are flawed, they are complex, they are so well written every single time. Honestly, it's rather annoying because if people wouldn't so easily dismiss his novels as trashy horror, his talent as a character writer could have been a lot more not noticeable or appreciated by other than specifically his fans. But having said that, I do feel I have to mention some things I like less about his novels. Fair enough, no one's perfect. And in the past, I mentioned a couple of times that I actually have this love-hate relationship with Stephen King because despite me generally loving his books and ideas, he does have a couple of tropes that really bothers me and make it more difficult to read his works. I will say that in the past, what, 50 years he has been writing, his style did change, but still, King's trope number one is excessive use of sex and profanities. Now, I'm not here clutching my pearls, okay? I said excessive because it is to me, and one of my pet peeves is doing edgy things like swearing and using sex and stuff, not in a way that's relevant to the plot or to the culture of the book, but because you think it makes you look cool. While reading Salem's Lot, I realized that what he does sometimes is making regular things or even tragic things sexual. For example, he can talk about a dead body, a victim of a murder, poor thing, and this body is, is naked, and he will describe it 
in a sexual way. This I don't like personally. Second trope and the main one is what I like to call the Stephen King ADD or the Stephen King blabber. Have you seen the size of an average Stephen King book? They're huge. You know why? Because the guy loves to talk. And sometimes it's interesting blabber. It's funny or makes sense in the character that we're following. But sometimes it's just stream of consciousness style gabble about things that are so minuscule. I said in a different review that King can tell us the entire life story of the person who asks the protagonist for directions. But now, after like half an hour talking about Blabber, right? I will finally start talking about his novels and what they offer to the beginner King reader. Let's start with one I can full-heartedly recommend pretty much everyone, and this is The Green Mile, a fantastic yet less offensive King work. This novel takes place in the 1930s in a death row section of a prison. The last corridor condemned men walk before they are executed has a green floor and it's a mile long, hence The Green Mile. The narrator is a guard on the mile, Paul Edgecombe, who encounters the unusual newest inmate there, at two-meter-tall black man called John Coffey, convicted of raping and murdering two little girls. But as time goes by, Paul learns that Coffey isn't just a really simple, nice man, but also has supernatural healing powers. And Paul starts doubting if a man like that could really have committed such a horrible crime. This book is just really, really good. King's book are sometimes regarded as somewhat trashy by some, but this one is more serious and also really tragic. There's a lot of injustice in this book, so be prepared to have tears of both rage and agony. It is in the fantasy genre, but set in a very realistic world, so unless anything remotely unrealistic bothers you to the extent that you can't bear reading it, I would still recommend this one. It's sad, it's tragic, it's not really scary, I don't think I will put it in the horror genre, but it has enough of King's general writing style to get a taste for it. And this book also has a lot of hard, fantastic characters, including the two despicable villains. It's just a great book, and the movie adaptation is also really, really good, but read the book first. Next, I want to talk about another King classic. Misery. And this one isn't supernatural at all, and genre-wise, I would put it in the same category as The Silence of the Lambs. It's a psychological thriller about how deprived human beings can be, and as much as demons and ghosts can be scary, regular human beings are capable of horrific things as well. Misery's protagonist is Paul Sheldon, the celebrated author of a melodramatic novel series called Misery. One day, he crashes his car in the middle of nowhere and is saved by a local woman called Annie Wilkes. He's very lucky because not only is Annie a strong farm girl who dragged him out and let him heal in her house, she is also a nurse. Coincidentally, she is his biggest fan, so she intends even more to nurse Paul back to health. Until she reads his latest book where he kills off the main character. From this point, Paul starts seeing who Annie really is and just how unhinged she is. She forces him to write a new novel, a retraction to the latest one. And until he does exactly as she wants him to, not only will she not let him leave, but use all her strength and nursing knowledge to make sure he suffers as much as possible. This book is very confined, which I love. Almost all of it takes place in one house with only two characters, and it focuses on the relationship between them with the constantly changing power dynamics. I don't know how thrilling the synopsis sounded, but this book was really creepy. More than that, it was also brutal, but at the same time very readable. There's a very good, very famous movie adaptation of this novel from 1990, and there is a very famous scene where Annie physically hurts Paul. No spoilers, but this scene in the book was a lot bloodier. Still, a great psychological work with a lot of meta-commentary from King, and a great example of horror through a human psychopath with a victim as opposed to something fantastical. 
Next, we have Needful Things. Now, if you ever want to make a parody of Stephen King's books, you will probably use many elements from this novel. There's a lot of things in it that remind me of the book It, but I decided to talk about this one instead because personally, I like Needful Things better. So this is a huge book, which isn't a bad thing, and it takes place in a small town in Maine, a nice, friendly place where everyone knows everyone. And one day, a new shop opens in the town, a shop called Needful Things, a shop that has everything, everything you might want, thing you always wanted, rare things, things you will give anything to have. The charming proprietor of the store doesn't ask much in return, just a little favor, something small. But little by little, these small things tear the little town apart. This is one of the first Stephen King novels I've ever read. It took me a long time to finish it, but I absolutely loved it. It was dark, evil, and fascinating. It also has so much of the Kingisms one usually talk about when they talk about his novels, his blabbery style, like a toddler trying to tell you a short story in three hours, his anti-religious sentiment, and going deeper than just God is good, the devil is evil, not being afraid to kill kids, lots of unnecessary sexualization, or maybe unnecessarily, in my opinion, but also the plot, the idea of the perfect town, then something evil arrives that makes people do bad things. The notion of hiding our true selves behind a mask, that we are all capable of horrific things. It's not just a nice store owner who is hiding his true self behind a smile, it's everyone in this town. So how much can you blame your evil deeds on the influence of somebody else? Religion can tell us that the devil makes us do bad things, but when you choose to do something bad, it becomes your responsibility. So if you want to read a classic Stephen King novel, and I know everyone already talked about it, and you want something else, then read this one, and it will tell you if you even like his style or not. Next, I want to recommend a newer book by King, because I do feel his writing style changed a little throughout the years, and this is The Outsider. Again, this occurs in a small town where everyone knows everyone, but this time the local junior baseball league coach is arrested, charged for the brutal torture and murder of a young boy. Despite the coach being a friendly face in the neighborhood, everyone knows him and his family, the police are certain he is the guy. However, he has a rock-solid alibi, and he was caught on camera, so how could it be? How could this man allegedly be in two places at once? And if he is innocent, who committed the crime? This book is a very Stephen Kingy book. It sets in a small town, it deals with horrific things, it has fantastic characters who are mostly just really good human beings, flawed as they are. But it's also a detective novel. It also, in my opinion, lacks some of the more annoying King blabber I mentioned before. It seems like in recent years he became a bit more focused in his writing. So if you do want to read King, but the last entry was a bit much in terms of chatter, and you're sick and tired of repetitiveness, try a novel written after 2010 and see if that's more your style. Okay, I talked about a relative recent one, now I do need to mention his first novel, the one that started it all. The one Kick said he didn't really want to write, but his wife pushed him to get his talent out there, and that is Carrie. This novel isn't very long, it's also not one of his best in my opinion, but definitely it's worth the read if you want King in a nutshell. In this novel, we have young Carrie White, a lonely high schooler from an abusive home who is also bullied at school. And one day she realizes she has telekinesis. She can move objects with her mind. And now, from a timid pushover, she realizes how strong she is. And after an ultimate evil prank by her classmates, she decided to take revenge on anyone who hurt her, from her school bullies to her own controlling mother. This plot synopsis is indeed what happens in the book, but it's not really what this novel is about. 
It is about being a teenager, transforming from a child to an adult and all the changes, psychologically and physically, that come with it. It's about finding your own self, overcoming adversity but by finding your own strength and letting your freak flag fly. Of course, Carrie's way of revenge is very violent and I don't condone it, but there's something pretty satisfying about reading a fictional book about killing your bullies. It also asks the question about nature versus nurture, because Carrie is the protagonist here, but she's also kind of a villain. But if she would have been treated nicely by others, wouldn't she have become a better person? I wonder what you think about this. Let me know in the comment section. Next, I want to talk about a very different book, not just for Stephen King, but also unique as a novel. It is also very underrated and barely talked about in the context of Stephen King novels, and this is Dolores Claiborne. Again, we have a book which is completely non-supernatural about the titular woman who is taken to the police station after being suspected of the murder of her employer. This is after years earlier, her husband died and many people think she killed him too. So is she a double murderer or is there something else going on here? Having told you that, you probably wonder what's so special about it. A pretty basic thriller, right? Well, what's unique here is the writing style. The entirety of the story is the account of Dolores telling the story completely in her own word to the police officers. It's called writing in vernacular. It's more than simply first-person narration. It's literally a transcript of her account. And this story, like Misery, is creepy. It is very interesting, first of all, and I would recommend it to pretty much anyone who wants to read a unique thriller, full stop, but it's also a story of a family, of a woman who would do anything to protect it, of the dark side of living in a small town where everyone knows everyone. In Needful Things, we have a seemingly perfect town whose mask of happiness is starting to fall apart, and in Dolores Claiborne, we have a town where everyone knows your secrets and everyone collectively decide to ignore problems because it's more convenient. King does like to look deep into small town living and gives us a picture of what it's really like words and all. Also, in this novel, we have one scene that, in my eyes, was so scary, I actually had nightmares about it after reading it. It is similar to Misery in that it's a human psychological horror thriller, but it's less violent. However, it's still about people doing horrific things to each other, so your choice how much you can handle. And the last book I want to mention is one of the last King books I've read, even though I wanted to read it since forever. It's definitely not a new one, and it is The Stand. Now, this book is not for everyone, mostly because it's just so darn long. It is an epic if I've ever read one. In The Stand, we have a deadly virus that quickly kills most of the world's population, and we follow a group of people who try to survive, each one in their own way, and how they meet each other and trying to build a community. All the while, we have another group led by someone who is pretty much the devil, and it is heavily implied that only one group can survive. So, this book is epic, to say the least. It's more than 1,000 pages long, but it was worth it. It was so thorough and interesting, and honestly, despite it being about a plague and death, I wouldn't even categorize it as horror. This is what I meant at the beginning of this video. The Stand is a rather famous Stephen King novel, and Stephen King is rather famous for his horror novels, but this one not only is it not really about death, it's also about hope. It's about camaraderie and our human need for each other and support and community, about how only working together will lead us to productivity. So in a way, this book was also rather uplifting. But King being King, we also get some of his blabber, although it's mostly inner monologues. Also King being King, the characters are the main focus here. There are so many characters here, and each one is 
amazing. The devil character was rather bland because, again, the real villains here were humans. Honestly, the scariest character in the book was of an incel. This book does put people in a very tough uh, circumstances and asks the age-old question of nature versus nurture. If the world would have been continued as normally, would these evil people have made the same choices? I believe they would have. It's just that these extreme circumstances push them to evolve to evil a lot faster. But seriously, this book was so much better than I thought it would be. And if you're not intimidated by some death and people doing evil things to each other and also a 1000 page book, I would definitely recommend the stat. It was a lot better than The Road. Argue about that with me in the comment section if you want. And guys, that was my personal Stephen King reading guide. I hope it was useful. I hope I opened your eyes a little regarding this famous, yes, misunderstood author. And if I did, do let me know in the comment section which book of his you want to read. Guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to click a like button and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos. Also, check out the description box where I linked other King reviews I made. So again, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.